if you are sitting down to do stealthy field research, what I did give you is check out these observational research projects, and it links you right into this very directory that shows you what my past students have done for this module and uh, five of you. And so I got a student, uh, an, an email from Chrissy, who has created this spreadsheet that details in excruciating accuracy a total of 35 uh, transactions that took place at a restaurant. Uh, I, I ate a, a TV dinner tonight which, what did I eat? I would have, I ate this um, chicken parmesan. So my dinner, these are people's dinners. They cost this much. This is how much they, uh, this is how much they paid for alcohol and so forth. Or not paid for alcohol, if they ordered alcohol. And then I presume that these drink costs include things that are non-alcoholic as well. So they do. Uh, look at this tool. This tool allows me to say, hmm, did uh, everyone that drink alcohol. So if I sort that ascending, so I have put all of the yeses, so people who are uh, purchasing alcohol at this restaurant, do they also, uh, like how do I see their trends in in total cost? Are they ordering a certain type of uh, entree? Do I see the entree cost go up? Uh, I can say, hmm, what was the highest entree cost at this? Oh, I see, the filet mignon, French. Okay, this is me going on and on. This is cool. This is a tool that a business could use. This is a tool that a, uh, a server or a uh, host could use to think about, well, are we, do we have enough seats at the bar? Uh, all these kinds of business questions. You could also see this and say, hmm, what was Eric talking about in this module? He wrote so much. I can't stand how much he writes. Uh, but you can look at what other people have created, and you can see that we are... Uh, indeed sharing interesting things. Here's a case study. We have a uh, another product of the Stealthy Field Research Module that records uh, with uh, um, an anonymity preserved with these uh, these ID numbers the uh, the way in which this chunk of observed people engage with uh, Disney, trips to Disney as an adult without children versus with children. This is an interesting situation because we would generally say, hmm, do the average people travel to Disney with uh, Disney World with uh, more with or without children? And I would have expected this gap to be larger. I wouldn't have expected this many people to go to Disney without children. So I learned something new about my conception of the world. It changed a little bit. Like, hmm, like what is it? I, I'm inclined to ask, what am I not understanding about Disney World as an adult who thinks of this place as something just for kids? So I'm missing out on something, and this spreadsheet, this data about the world has helped me revise my understanding of what I think is going on. And look at this great uh, way that this report has been summarized. It's short. Conclusion, people who have children travel more often to Disney World than those who do not. Uh, I would add to that conclusion, it is interesting to note that the difference is only, ooh, can we calculate that? Equals, uh, ooh, edit, I can't, I can't edit this. I can't tinker with it. I'm just viewing, but I can click edit in browser, and most likely you will need to be signed into a CCAC account so that you have uh, tinker access here. So I can come in and say, well, let's find the difference. The with children minus without. So that means 2.21. So we could say difference 2.21. And you're thinking, oh, that's ugly. Well, we can use format paste and say, I want to take the formatting that's in with children, apply it to difference. Same thing with the blue background on the number, make it bold. And so uh, I could even fill in some, I could keep this blue, so I, I'll just take a, a regular blue cell and paste it in there. I can clone itself again, format painter, and scroll down. And so I could, uh, I could make this bigger or bolder, but you get the idea. Uh, <coughs> you can do this. What I'm doing here is publicly accessible to the entire world via the, via the Internet. So this is an unusual class in that what we uh, see going on now 
is see this structure? I didn't make this. This lovely way of presenting the result of this module didn't take that much time, just typed a couple sentences, but took thought. And uh, someone else came on, and then another student observed consumer shopping behaviors for Dick's Sporting Goods. And I'm thinking, this look at look at how nice this is. It's this person's own research, own module experimentation. Let me click back so we can see both. So here we have two different results of explorations using spreadsheets of what's going on in the world. And they one or the other probably looked at the other and saw that this is an efficient way and a, and a smart way to do it. They made it their own. They reformatted it. There's, it's about different content. And so what we've created by going through the effort to find the right directory on your own and label the, the, uh, the files with a consistent format, not only can we easily see your peers, Spring 18, maybe uh, some of you might check back in the fall and see maybe someone has built on and learned from your idea. It's not stealing. Uh, now, in this case, uh, I have learned that it would be interesting for me to understand more about where each of these students came from. Maybe if someone designed the original and the other person maybe didn't understand how to do the duplication uh, or to create the effect that was uh, in the original. If I understood a little bit more about where this came from, that would be useful. <coughs> and in general, as a note, um, this is very important. Our classroom is a playground. Uh, we are learning how to do things and learning how to collaborate. So I have not been requiring, enforcing, commenting on, or providing uh, instruction around how to give proper feedback or a proper notice of when you are working on other people's uh, work, uh, when you're standing on their shoulders to uh, build your own uh, creation. And in general, we encourage both sharing and giving credit for sharing when that credit is asked for. And since I haven't specifically asked you to ask for credit, I don't think we have done any egregious wrong. And we should more importantly celebrate what has been created, which is learning from each other with very minimal intervention from a authority. You know, I didn't spell this out. This was created and shared and built upon. And this is uh, extremely beautiful. And I want to uh, finish up with some comments on the ones that I have not uh, featured because of the summary, but these are lovely and legitimate and uh, good to learn from. We have a uh, student, Grant, who has decided to, uh, let's see, I'm just going to read this spreadsheet. The time they arrived, time they left, male or female, time spent in minutes, and approximate age. So company alone. See, this is, this is great. Individuals who eat alone, more likely to stay longer than people who are in parties. And look at this great um, analysis. So we can say, answer, no. This is so concise. We have a question, we have data, and we have an answer. This is a stellar way to present information. Are men or women more likely to stay longer while dining at a restaurant? Average for men, average for women, yes or, excuse me, women. Um, uh, and there's my bias, I suppose. Are individuals who eat alone more likely to stay longer than people who are in parties? Staying alone, parties, uh, that would be an intuitive result. It was great to get data about it. Just because the answer is what one might expect does not mean it's worthless data, for heaven's sake. Uh, so, excellent job, Grant. This is fantastic. Very concise, very effective.